Welcome to the Hyper Fast Show. I am so excited to have my friend, Mike Bernier, on the show. He's gonna talk about treating your business like a business, and he's a badass. So before we get into it, can you just share with them a little bit about your business? Yeah, sure. So this is one topic I'm super passionate about because of the way that my, my business has progressed. So I started out years ago, like everybody else, as a solo agent. Uh, went through that whole progression of solo agent to top producer to really top producer solo agent to team leader. Dying. Yes, dying, dying. top totally producer dying. solo agent. Totally dying. Like every minute of every day, it, it was all on me. Like every bit of revenue generation was all on me. So if I stopped for one minute, I felt that, right? So, you know, then I went into team leader, then my, now broker. So I've just been through this progression of, of running a business like a business because I spent many years trying to do it all myself and it, it just destroyed my life. It really did. Sure. And some of you watching right now, you're there. Absolutely. And it's, the sad thing is the more successful you get, the harder it is to have a life, right? It is. It is. So, you know, if you look at it, I think a lot of people that go into real estate, we all kind of get in and we've got different goals. And, you know, there's a reason why we want to be self-employed. Yes. There really is. But, you know, when you're self-employed, it's not really that you own a business. You're really just sort of this uh, person that's conducting business, your self-employed conducting business. Mm -hmm. So making that transition from going from uh, conducting business to owning a business, that's a place that most of us never really get to because we can't yep. let go. Yep, you you're know? right. So that's, that's been something that was a hard lesson for me is how do I let go? How do I, how do I get past the mindset that if I delegate off or outsource or even insource, how do I get past that mindset that my business is going to suffer? That was a very hard sticking point for me. Sure. And how did you resolve that in yourself? Well, you know what it was? It was, it was strange because it got to the point that I wasn't having fun anymore. Like I was, I was dying to you know, get out from underneath how my 14 hour days uh, felt. So when I met my partner, Long Doan, um, Long and I formed a, kind of a new business model and brokerage. I wanted to transition out of production. I wanted to actually do something a little bit different where it wasn't just all on me. Uh, so that's, that's how I made that, made that leap. And was that because he helped you see a different path and was already there? Or was it because you both partnered at a point where you both desperately needed a solution? I think we both desperately needed a solution. At yeah. the time, you know, he was really heavily in REO and that was sort of dying down. Um, and then we both looked at each other like, what's going to be our next move? So we decided then to kind of open a traditional brokerage, go that route. Um, you know, for me, it was great because I thought I can finally kind of get out of production. He's thinking I can transition because my business is, is slowing down. Sure. So then we started thinking about how we can support other people in their business. That's mm -hmm. really how we started. If That's that makes awesome. Sense. Well, yes. And yeah. let me ask this just to give you guys some perspective, because I think this is huge. How many agents do you have today? Yeah, so today we're sitting with 425 agents, right? 425. Most of you are trying to figure out how to have 425 clients or potential clients or leads, and they have 425 agents. We do. So, you know, with that, um, with that, we also did that 425, went from eight to 425 in about a little over five years now. And I think the mindset shift that really happened for me personally is when I stopped thinking like a revenue generator, just like, you know, and I think agents do this. We think like revenue generators. We sure. think very yeah. linear and even sequential. We think about, you know, the transactions that we're about to have or the clients we need to service. Yeah, I've got three buyers, I've got four buyers, I've got five listings, and we're thinking about those transactions. Sure. To step back and start thinking more like a CEO, mm -hmm. to not think about, you know, those transactions and those buyers, but think about the processes that led to those buyers or sellers in the, in the first place and think about how to really um, uh, duplicate and replicate those processes, how to make them better how to focus on the operations of your business rather than just the transactions you're about to, you know, about to have or about to realize. So that was one of the main mindset shifts in me is thinking about, well, if I'm doing something very well, um, how, can I, how can I make it even better? Or how can I integrate other things in my business that I can duplicate the same successes with? So trying to transition to think less like a revenue generator and more like an actual CEO, that was, that was, a, uh, that was sort of a progression. That didn't happen overnight. But I think we all need to get there if we're going to start thinking about running our business like a business. And running a business like a business, to me, uh, what that means is that the revenue generation is no longer solely on you. If you stepped away from your business for a minute, you know, it's not going to fall apart. Whether that means you can step away for a day, a week, a month. I was just going to ask that. I'm like, how long is a minute? 
But but I think I think the you know if you really look at the uh, CEO um, the profile of a CEO on a small organization they can't they're active CEOs so they're not going to be able to step away long long term you know maybe a week yeah. and their business is fine but the the more you dial in your business and the more you grow and scale it the less active you have to be and now you're starting to focus on really the higher level activity to build that business yeah. so again you know if if you're really good at, at working with your sphere of influence if that's your main source of business. So instead of just focusing on servicing those referrals and those past clients, how can I then start building in business operations that I'm not just working with one or two buyers at a time, but now I need to work with five or six or seven. Sure. Uh, what led to those referrals in the first place? And can I really double down on that activity so I get more for referrals faster? Can I vertically integrate? Can I go from just sphere of influence, which I'm really strong at, but now I'm gonna add another integration of like open houses. I'm gonna start lead generating really well from open houses or maybe online leads or sign calls or whatever it yeah. is. And now you're gonna focus on those processes to be as successful there as you are in your sphere of influence. So that's what I'm really talking about. I love that. Does it make sense? I love it. Yes, and I yeah. have a question for you and it's a tough one. Are you yeah. ready? I'm ready. Are you guys ready? So for the people who are watching this right now and they're starting to hit that burnout. Yep. How do they go from when they shift their mindset? They're already working 14 hour days. Mm -hmm. They're burnt out. They're solopreneurs. Yep. Well, it would be the steps you would recommend to get them to a point that they can focus on the systems and the processes sure. when they're already overwhelmed and feeling like they want to just go live on an island. Sure. So if you go to that island, let me know where it is, too, because I <laughs> so want to live we'll on an island. We'll come visit you for a while. Yes. I mean, yeah. you don't realize I live in the winter in Minnesota. You know, I mean, <laughs> I want an island. Um, so anyway, first off, let me preface it like this. I think the, the key, the mystery behind all this is uh, we've identified five problems in real estate to solve. And I think when you can solve these five problems, you've won at life, you've won at real estate. And if you think back when you first got licensed, your biggest problem you had was creating consistent income. I mean, you, you walk in day yeah. one with your license and people are not knocking your door down to work oh, with you're you, right? Just walk, you're wandering aimlessly in the world trying to find clients. You are, yeah. right? So that's your focus and your conversion rates aren't there yet. Nobody trusts you yet because you're, you're not tested. There's no proof of concept with you yet. But by the time you actually start creating that consistent income, now you create a whole new problem for yourself, which is efficiency. Yeah. Yep. So now you got to figure out how do I be more efficient? I'm running around, I'm, I'm doing 15, 16 transactions a year. I feel like I need an assistant when you probably don't, you're just not yet efficient with your time. You're not efficient with how you're leveraging time, systems, automation, things like that. Sure. So once you start dialing in to scale yourself and you're recognizing the highest and best use of your time. So to get back to your question, to, to recognize your highest and best use of time, start eliminating and outsourcing the things that, that do not serve you. Sure. You know, and it happened for me in my personal life. I mean, I, I don't cut my own grass. I don't, I don't even cook yeah. my own meals. I have things delivered. I started buying back my time so I can focus on the higher level integrations that I need to. So once you become efficient um, and, and you max out, no matter how efficient you get, you can still only service so many people at so many times at one time. Now it's time to start thinking about scale. Yeah. And that's where Hold most on, people. Hold on one minute before yes. you keep going. I want to make sure you guys heard what he just said. Buy back your time. Mm -hmm. Because time is the only thing that we all just, we just have 24 hours in a day. Right. I, I call it like time is the ultimate equalizer. Right. Yes. So whether or not. Yes. I don't care how talented you are, wealthy you are, connected you are. It's the ultimate equalizer. None of us can have more than the other. But like money, I could give you $10,000 right now and I could take $10,000. I might go blow it and have a great night in Vegas and great memories. And you might, you know, put that down on a new investment property and have an ROI to that money. It's the same thing with your time. So the way you leverage and invest your time versus spend and waste it is going to dictate whether or not you can go to that next step, which is scale. Yep. And when you're, when you're trying to scale, you're going to go through the next problem, which is going to, you know, crush you and mentally because what's gonna happen is you're used to being at a certain income level and a certain control of your business and now you're gonna scale, you're gonna start insourcing, you're gonna start hiring. You're gonna start working on process and procedures and, and yeah. stuff like that. When what happens is you hit a new problem is profitability because your income starts to go down. Mm -hmm. Because now you're paying bills that you know that you're not used to paying and you're not your focus isn't just primarily production anymore. And your so. time is spent on other people instead of in the field. So all of a sudden you either work 16, 18 hour mm -hmm. days or you work less, and yes. then you have a different problem. Exactly right. And that's I love this. This yes. is awesome. It's, so yeah. it's a progressive problem, right? So once you solve efficiency, now you're going into scale, which brings in the new problem, which is profitability. You're going to go through this J curve. And by the time you get through the end of it, most people drop off. They don't have the stomach for it. Can you really invest? And this is the, the key like starting point of running a business. 
is you don't start a business for free and you don't make money day one. That's not the sure. normal track. You have to invest in that business. And that's what that first year, 18 months, whatever it is, looks like is you're going through that investment period. Now you're starting to meet people, good hires. You're starting to get your flow. People are figuring it out. Yeah. You're, you're investing in your people. They're, you know, your systems and processes are coming together, which creates a whole new problem after you solve profitability. Now it's time to start figuring about how do I replace this business income with residual income? Yeah. Now start car you know, carving off some of that operational money you're making from your business and putting that in places that you can match your business income and eventually that grows independently. Once, you once you've done all that and solved those five problems, I believe that's when you've really won it at this game, right? Because this real estate license we all have, it's, a, it's like an endless potential. Yes. But very few of us will ever realize that potential because we get stuck in, in problem two. We never grow, we never grow past efficiency because we just won't let go. Yeah. That was my problem. Yeah, that, I mean, this is like, an exceptional interview, you guys. I hope that you're taking notes and really taking this to heart. There's been like three times I've wanted to start writing things down, so thank you. Um, I think the J curve is one of the biggest things because when you start hiring, there are plenty of people who get to the point where they try and delegate. They're probably stuck in efficiency. They are. But they try and do it, and what ultimately happens is either they can't figure out how to do it or they have the wrong hire and they don't anticipate the J. And because they don't anticipate that it's gonna take a hit first, they quit right when they're about to have the ROI on the time that they invested. They do, and all those fears and limiting beliefs you know, are gonna kick in. You know, All mm -hmm. that scarcity mindset is going to kick in. So to push past that, to be able to see past your obstacle, and I think that's one tell, telling tale of success or one trait I see with successful people, is we all have obstacles. Yeah. But you know, are you gonna hit that obstacle once or twice and then give up, or are you gonna push past it? Are you gonna find you know, different angles to hit it from? Are you gonna keep moving until you uh, get past that obstacle, or are you gonna stop? I think a lot of us stop when that obstacle hits us, and we just accept, this is where my fixed position is, this is where I'm gonna stay. You know, so all those limiting beliefs start kicking in. This won't work in my market. I, this, the, you know, this doesn't apply to me or I can't let go or nobody else can do this as well as I can. You've got to push past that if you really want to start going to that next level. 100%. Yeah. So if you were to identify one limiting belief that you were able to shift to mm -hmm. get you out of that place where you were stuck, what was it for you? Well, I think what it was is, is the pursuit of perfection. Like I, I was so hyper-focused on doing everything, like competing at such a high level, like nobody else could, could work with the buyer as well as I could, show a house as well as I could, trans, uh, um, process a transaction as well as I could. So understanding that the limiting belief is you don't need perfection, it's about the process. It isn't about the end of being perfect, it's about the process. Mm -hmm. And when you switch it about being about the process, Pretty soon, you can accept that you know maybe a transaction coordinator won't do it quite as good as you. Maybe it's only 75% as good as you. But what will happen over time as you keep developing those processes, pretty soon that transaction coordinator is doing 300 transactions, not you know not 15 like you're used to doing, right? Yep. They're doing hundreds of these things, and that's all they do, and they get really really good at it. So you know my limiting belief was I had to hold on. When I, when I uh, shifted that and let go, I started figuring out you can departmentalize and put real experts. I mean, whether, you know, whether or not you're a listing agent, a buyer's agent, team leader, whatever, whatever you're really, really um, um, uh, good at, whether it's gathering listings or working with buyers, at some point that, that scales to a point you need to actually departmentalize it. And you start bringing in listing coordinators, you start bringing in showing agents, and they get really, really good at what they do. In fact, better than what you're going to do. And that's, yep. that's the key of growing a business is understand, look for people that can do it better than you can. And don't think that you're the only one that can do it. Well, and you salespeople, be honest with yourself. You're not detail people. No. So you think that you're exceptional at this and you have the relationship and you're the answer to every problem, but you're actually part of the problem if you're really honest with yourself. As an example, if you work with a lot of buyers, you miss things in the contract. Mm -hmm. If you're really good as a buyer's agent, you're not as good at doing contracts. And if you are really good at doing contracts, you're kidding yourself to think that you're amazing as a buyer's agent, right? Because the personalities very, very, very rarely go together. So my, my uh, aha and what you just said is also, if you're getting to the 14 hour days, you're starting to burn out and you yourself are going to start start dropping bigger balls than you already are. And you, don't and know, you know you're already dropping balls. Yeah, and you don't always see the effects of that. That's a problem. You think that you're doing fantastic, but you know the reality is if you would shift, 
and start working efficiently, and you're focusing then on that higher level activity, and then you're focusing on developing systems and process, um, then your business grows to a different level. So uh, as a solo agent, I was doing, you know, 70 plus transactions a year with one transaction coordinator. Wow. Right? That's as amazing. Even our production team right now will do over three, we'll do around 300 transactions with about 12 agents right now, you know, and I don't, I no longer produce. That's just the production team within our brokerage. Sure. So, you know, I have, we have way, um, you know, went past or succeeded past the 70 transactions I was doing as a solo agent. And we can grow that team to 500, 600, whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. But the only reason we're able to do that is because I could recognize that, you know, in order to grow at a higher level, you have to focus on higher level activity. Period. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this was incredibly helpful. If there was one thought you want to leave our viewers with today, what would it be? Um, I think the thought is, is the, the why to grow. Um, I think people don't grow or they accept where they're at over comfort. You know, they've in how many top producers have you known? They've already done hundreds of transactions. They, they've got a great house, a great car. I mean, the, the thing I hear from them is, I really don't need more. I'm good. And I think that's sort of the, the danger in all of it, is when you get mm -hmm. comfortable, things start to slide, or you, get, you lose the inspiration that got you there in the first place. So I think we sure. need to live in a world of being uncomfortable and keep pushing past it and keep, keep growing, not you know, to catch your competition. I, I don't think that you know, true success happens by focusing on your competition. You have, focus, you have to focus on your own goals, right? Yep. But keep on setting those goals, keep pushing yourself past the comfort, because that's when life really happens at a high level. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you're identifying a why, because uh, I can relate to this. I had a moment when I was at a Tony Robbins event mm -hmm. and the person on stage was talking about how they lost their vision. And I just started sobbing. And my mm -hmm. husband, it was right after my son was born and my husband's looking at me like, what just happened? Like, we're at this rah-rah event, everybody's jumping up and down, you're, you're freaking out, what's going on, right? And he's my business partner. And I said, I just realized like I lost track of my why mm -hmm. because I had always wanted to be number one in Virginia. Right. Right. And right. then we achieved it. And then I, I it was kind of like, <gasps> now what? I don't know where to go from here. And so I was kind of like, like foot off the gas, trying to figure it out. I was in the wrong coaching program, right? which the wrong coaching program is like acid on your soul. For me, they were all about cutting expenses, cutting expenses, cutting expensive instead of growing. And I'm such a growth minded person mm -hmm. that it was totally squelching my potential. So when you get in that place, if you get in that place, even as a team leader, there will be moments where you lose sight. Part of what will get you reengaged and back on track is really engaging with your people. Because when you become so committed to their growth, you have to. I believe, have a vision that's big enough to include growth for all of them. Mm -hmm. And when you get back to that place, I mean, you're coming to work invigorated every day. And I think you need to connect back with purpose, right? I mean, if you, once you lose that purpose, if your why is to be number one and that's what you've hit, then you need to start figuring out what's my, what's my purpose? What am I really do, doing here? What kind of impact am I trying to create? Yeah. You know, what business am I really in? I mean, so you have to go back. Yes to those core principles. I think we always think of things like the you know, SWOT analysis and finding your why and some of those core, like what are my core values? We think of those things as so basic and foundational that we don't really revisit those. And I think you gotta go back and revisit those often to help keep you moving forward in the right direction. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. And if they wanna connect with you or follow you on social, where should they go? Yep, so uh, social media, um, you could follow me right on, right on Facebook. I friend just about everybody, so Mike Bernier, that's, that's me. Um, so you can also follow uh, us at Realty Group 2, realtygroupmn.com. My partner and I, that's the brokers that we run. Um, and through Club Wealth as well, because we're both coaches there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for today. This was incredible. And you guys, give us a like below. Follow along. We'd love to inspire you day after day. So um, give us some feedback below and subscribe. See and let me soon. thank you for having me on. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. All right. Bye, you guys. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you liked it. Give it a quick like below and comment and share. We'd love your feedback. For more videos like this, click here. And to subscribe, click here.